friends and welcome to my channel. My name is Ashley and I am a crochet designer that also teaches crocheters how to have a successful handmade business. You are watching the fourth and final video in this series where I talk all about email lists and how to use them in your crochet business. In video one, I shared all of my insights on why having an email list is even important to your business. In video two, I told y'all pros and cons of my email provider, MailChimp. In video three, I gave you some valuable tips and tricks on how to get subscribers to your email list. If you haven't watched videos one, two, or three, go ahead and pause this video Give the others a listen, then come back here to continue with video four. Here in video four, I give some information on what kind of content to actually send to your subscribers. This video is the longest of the four, and that is because there are a lot of valuable nuggets being shared. So grab your current whip you are working on and probably a notebook for taking notes. You may want to brain dump some ideas that start flooding in while watching the video. Okay, so, all right, Ashley, I hear you. Emails are important, check. But after I get them, after I get their emails, what do I send them? in the email and how often do I need to email them? Um, those are some questions that you might be asking yourself and we're going to talk about them right now. My first tid, tidbit of information is consistency is key. That's the same for anything that you do. Any, any platform that you're going to be on ever, you want to you want to be consistent. And I used to think consistent meant post every day. Right? That's what I thought consistent was. It doesn't have to be every day, but whatever you choose, once a week, once a month, uh, three times a week, try to stay consistent in what whatever time frame you've chosen or set for yourself. Because if you are like killing it and coming in with every other day, you're sending me some really helpful um, emails that are like helping me be a better mom or something like every day you're giving me a new idea of something I can do with my kid during quarantine because your ideal customer you sell kids things right so that would make sense for you to send that in an email and then I'm loving it as your ideal customer I'm like yes oh we're totally gonna do that that's gonna be such a fun project oh I have that we can do that today and you're sending me these every day and then all of a sudden it goes dead silent and you don't send me anything and then it's at Christmas time and you're like hey I have a sale going on I'm gonna be like no freaking thanks like you need you, if you think that you've got time to be like really productive and get a whole lot of emails sent out, don't send them out back to back to back to back to back just because you have the, the content. Hold on to them, space them out in a time frame that makes sense for you so then you don't just have a dry spell and not send anything to your people because they're, they're going like, to be like missing it and then feeling like you're not serving them well anymore. It's just bad psychology. Um, so that's something to think about when you do decide. Make it, like, make it, not reasonable, but logical. Like, you can do this, whatever, dunnable. What is that word? Means, means you have it in you to, to do, like, once a week. And with your time schedule and your kids' schedules, you think you could send an email once a week. Whatever it is that works best for your business and your family, um, try to stick to that and try to, like, batch if you need to and create a bunch of emails all at once. And then you say, I'm just going to send out an email once a month. And I'm going to say, it's June. Here's a list of things that you can do in June. Or I'm going to have a sale on June 15th. Or I don't know. But if you wanted to send an email once a month, I think that's a great place to start. I, I try to space out my emails. Um, I'm going to show you my calendar. And I have Hannah to help me now. So it's been fantastic but all those green ones these green guys are emails and I've got them spaced out because I'm trying really hard not to be like boom 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 and some of them I can't I can't avoid it like rap label Wednesdays those are gonna go look at my pants <laughs> what is happening rap label Wednesdays are gonna go out every week um, and then when I have a new pattern coming out I want to let you guys know about it when Crochet Boss Academy is opening up. I'm going to let you guys know about it. Things like that. But I, I try to be mindful that I'm going to be spacing them out. I don't want, and it helps me to look at the count the month as a, as a whole and say, okay, if I wanted to do once a week, my, my email would probably just be Rap Label Wednesday. 
and I would send that out once a week. I think once a week is a great goal. I think once a month is a great first goal. You don't want to overwhelm anybody, but you don't want to leave them in the dust either. And you want to serve the living pants off of your people through email. Whenever you send an email, you want it to be something that they are going to read and then feel like they benefited somehow by spending that time reading it with you. Um, okay, consistency, talked about that. Now, tip number two for what to send in your email. You can send guides too. It doesn't have to just be a lead magnet. Like the guides and lists that we talked about, you could send those out as emails too. It doesn't just have to be your lead magnet idea. So maybe you get one idea for a lead magnet, but three more list ideas for emails. That's totally fine. Um, the main thing is just to remember, how can I serve my people today? And that's why niching down is very important, because if you make all of the things for all of the people, your emails are not going to resonate with any one person. Every person who reads your emails is going to be like, mm, I don't, I don't, I don't crochet. Like, because half of your people are crocheters and half of your people buy finished pieces. If you send out 10, 10 tips for designing your first crochet pattern, People that buy finished pieces that don't even know the thing's crocheted, they just know that it's made from yarn, they're going to be like, I don't need 10 tips for unsubscribe, right? That's not good. That's not what you want. You want to serve your ideal customer. You want to niche your product line down to serve one specific type of person and then all of the people that are like that person. And that will um, help you start to build a more like sturdy business more sturdy foundation think of your email list like a mini little blog if you don't have a blog and you have ideas that would make awesome blog posts you just don't have a blog yet you can test these ideas as emails get some feedback save it when you do get a blog you've already got content ready to go copy and paste done post it once a week or something so you can be consistent and then you're ready to go. So that's something that you can think about. You'll have these sent emails forever, like saved in your MailChimp or whatever, wherever it's saved at. And then you can go back later and get that content that you've already taken time to create and gotten feedback on. If they really enjoyed it, they'll be like, thank you so much. That was super helpful. If, if nobody sends you a message at all about a, like a response from that thing maybe it wasn't helpful or maybe they just don't respond yet so don't that's not like a be all end all type situation but whenever I get emails back from my people saying oh my gosh I love today's rap labels or um, oh that freebie you sent me just made so much things click in my mind like when I get things like that I know I'm I'm on the right path and I know that, like, okay, they really like these wrap labels. They, I use lots of color. Um, I'm going to just keep using lots of color in my wrap label designs, things like that. I can use the feedback and apply it to my business. I forgot that I have water. Melissa, if you do have a blog, your email can just be a teaser to get people to your blog. So if I was going to write a blog post about 10 ways to decorate your home with baskets this fall, I could send you an email that says, hey, I just posted a blog post about 10 ways to decorate your house with baskets this fall. Or you can say, here are three ways to decorate your house with baskets this fall. For, th for the rest of the list, 4 through 10, click here and go check out my blog post. Um, you want to use your email list to direct traffic to your blog post if you have a blog post. Um, but you also want to be serving them. You don't want to waste their time. You're saying, hey, this blog post is going to help you a lot. Like this this is going to make your life better. All you got to do is read it. Here's a link. So you're still serving them through your email because you're directing them to the blog post that's going to serve them, right? So, but if you don't have a blog post, you can just, if you don't have a blog, you could put what you would put on a blog in the email and send it to people and see how they respond, see if it helps them whatever. Sales and coupon codes, that's something you can send in an email list. So maybe you, you want to look at the year and say, okay, I want to do a sale in July for my Christmas in July, and I want to do a sale in the summertime to get rid of some of my my fall and winter stock, my over overflow of stock. So you know, okay, those two months, I'm going my, my one, once a month email is going to be about those sales. Um, or coupon codes. If you're saying, hey, today's my birthday, um, and I wanted to give all of you a coupon code for today to celebrate my birthday. Happy birthday to me. 
It's a little narcissistic. I would word it differently, probably. But you can send your, your people, your email list people, a private coupon code that you don't share with anybody else. You don't post it on social media. You don't um, give it to other people to share or you don't encourage your people to share about it, which it's good if they do. That's really, really good because then you're going to get more sales. So don't be like, oh, that was private. Um, but you keep it private and that's going to make them feel valued and valuable which they are so that's that's good psychology happening um, in your in their brain so that's really good sales and coupon codes and then also you might want to email your people whenever you have an event coming up so if you are like a maker and you go to markets you can say, hey, I'm going to be at this show on this day at this time. Come see me. Say you got this email and I'll give you a free gift, right? Something like that to help encourage people to come to the show and to say hi to you at your booth. Um, any, any, the more eyeballs you can get at your booth, the better chances that you will have a sale. So if you can use your email list to get more traffic to the event, that would be really good for you. That would be good for the people who put on the event. That would be good for your customer because you're going to serve them well by selling them products that will benefit their life somehow. Um, so it's good for everybody all around. And those were the top four things or the top three things that I had in my mind for what you could email people mini blog posts, sales and coupons, event invites. Um, also though, if you just want to, if you think you come across some information that if you are your ideal customer and you find something that's really helpful that you think would benefit them, send an email out. Be like, hey, I just found, so I'm a mom and I have three kids and they're all each in different sports and I I love taking pictures of them at their sports. I don't know, guys. I have one kid. She doesn't do any sports. But maybe you found the chat book app and they're having a huge sale with 50% off all the books. And you like you're like, oh, I'm a mom and I'm gonna eat that up. I'm gonna get so many books. And you're like, I know other moms would love this awesome deal. If your ideal customer is a mom, send that out. She's gonna appreciate that. You can say, I am not affiliated with chat books. I make no money off of this whatsoever. I just thought this was an awesome deal and I had to share it with you um, because I'm your girl and I got your back. Like that's what you're saying when you send them things that's going to serve them and that could happen if you're a designer and you see a huge sale at Joann's when you're there tell your people be like listen I just left Joann's and I got two buggies full for 20 bucks y'all need to go to your local Joann's right now your people will appreciate that because I don't have time to watch all of the yarn stores and see who's having a sale win right and if you just tell me then I can be like done in my car Hitting the gas pedal all the way to Joann's. Not me because I don't have a Joann's, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, serve your people above all else, and that is going to build trust with their people. That is going to make them not build trust as in, oh, I'm going to buy her products because I like her. That is the that is what we're going for, but not not that tone, not that mindset. We are just letting people know that we are real human beings. That's what we build. That's what building trust is. We are. I like to say building relationships better than building trust just because I feel like the word trust sounds sneaky to me, but you're building relationships with your audience, letting them see you as a human being, not just a faceless person on the internet, right? And, and that's what every time you serve them well, whether it's through social media posts, through your email, through your product line, when you serve them well, your points go up for for the relationship status, okay? And um, that's what we're going for with our businesses. Anytime that you can turn a customer into a return customer, you have won. Anytime that you can turn a customer into a true fan of your brand and they're gonna follow you on Instagram, subscribe to your email list, comment on all of your posts, buy every time they need a birthday present, like that's, that's the goal. If you can get 100 of those people, imagine how much money you would have coming in all the time. Um, so that's, that's the goal with our businesses is to turn customers into return customers that come back and shop with us time and time again, and we can build relationships with these people. And the last little thing that I had was, um, there's more you can learn about email lists. I don't know much about funnels or sales funnels. I do know that when someone subscribes to my email list, they get the freebie that they signed up for. And the next day they get a welcome email. That's that's it for me when it comes to a funnel, but there's ways to use it 
that's very strategic and like well thought out and you think okay I'm gonna send this this email to this person and if they click to go shop now if they click the button that says view the shop then tomorrow I'm gonna send them an email that says here's the coupon code because maybe they clicked and they didn't buy anything right you can tell your email to say did they click on anything yes did they buy anything no if no tomorrow send them a coupon code like you can set that up um, through different email list providers. I just don't know how to do that. I haven't got there yet. That's not something like I'll cross that bridge when I get there type deal. Um, and also, you don't have to know everything about email lists before you create an email list. Like, I know I know as little as I need to know to, to get through that season of business, and I just keep learning the next thing that I need to know. Um, I, I didn't know, my email list first just got an automated uh, WordPress email that sent out and gave them the first paragraph of my blog post and then it said continue reading and that was it. That email was sent out automatically through WordPress. Um, and Taylor and I talked about that a long, long time ago. You just learn it in little bites at a time and you keep learning and then that's how you succeed. Learn what you need to know when you need to know it. This concludes our four part video series all about email lists and why they are important to your crochet business. Hopefully after watching this video, you got some valuable tips and a flood of content ideas for your business's newsletter. As promised in video one, I have put together a resource for 20 newsletter topics for crochet business owners. If you are already subscribed to my newsletter, you have already received this freebie, but if you are not, you can subscribe through the link below and the freebie will be sent to you automatically. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and watching this four part video series. I hope it motivated you to start building an email list for your crochet business and start talking directly to your ideal customer. If you have not checked out the Etsy video series, I have linked part one in the description below for you guys. So you guys can give that a listen and see if creating an Etsy shop will be beneficial for your crochet business. If you like this video series, be sure to hit that subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up to let me know, hey, we like this kind of content, keep it coming. And for my last minute Lucy's who still haven't taken action on creating an email list, what are you waiting for? It's free, it's simple, and it will really help you take your business to the next level. You can find my MailChimp referral link down below. I have had a blast making this series for you and cannot wait to hear all about how you are using an email list to better serve your audience. I will see you guys in the next video. That's all for now.